Welcome to this monthly video series called Tips for Facilitating NVC Groups with Joy and Confidence. Each month I'll offer a new tip or two for how to fine-tune or develop your facilitation skills so that you and the people in your groups may flourish. Today I'm going to start with the basics by covering two topics, my opening premise for group participation and how I see the facilitator's role. The opening premise is this. People want to be supportive of a group process, but they don't always know how, so they sometimes choose behaviors that inhibit or block group process from operating effectively. Marshall Rosenberg might refer to this as a tragic expression of an unmet need. Have you ever thought a person in your group was difficult, too needy, annoying, or maybe disruptive or even clueless? Have you wondered if some people, maybe even yourself, are a bottomless pit of emotion? If you have, don't be disheartened. I've thought these same things myself. And over the years, I've learned that when we get stuck in our judgments of others, it is difficult or even impossible to be effective as group leaders. The trick is to remember that they are people who are trying to meet their needs but lack the skills for doing so. I used to be one of those people, by the way, and maybe you were too. <laughs> One of your primary roles as a facilitator is to help your group members learn how to support their needs and the needs of the group. Take a moment now and say the opening premise with me. People want to be supportive of group process, but they don't always know how. So they sometimes choose behaviors that inhibit or block group process from operating effectively. And now pause and let that sink in. If there's any part of you that doesn't believe this premise, Pause the video and give yourself a moment or two of empathy, or make an appointment to get empathy from someone else. If you truly think that people want to disrupt group process, it is merely an indication that your precious needs have been unmet for some time now, and perhaps it's time for you to focus on filling up your own empathy tank. When you're ready, come back to watch the rest of the video. So now let's define the facilitator's role. The facilitator is the person who is primarily responsible for guiding group process so that the group's purpose may be fulfilled. Everyone in the group shares some responsibility for this, but the facilitator takes on primary responsibility. They do this by simultaneously valuing the needs of each individual in the group, their own needs as a facilitator, and the needs inherent in the group's purpose. Let's look at each of these separately. So the facilitator is primarily responsible for guiding group process so that the group's purpose may be fulfilled. What's your group's purpose? Are you an empathy group or perhaps a general practice group? Have you gathered to learn or practice a specific NVC principle or process? Or is your purpose to start an organization or to do some kind of business together? Are you 100% certain that everyone in your group is aware of your purpose? If there's any part of you that isn't certain that people in your group agree on your purpose, I suggest you take some time to clarify it. For instance, many years ago, I heard about a practice group that some people thought was an empathy group. Other members of the group thought they had agreed to use their time doing role plays, and the facilitator thought they wanted to watch him model the process. All of these would have been valuable activities, but this group lived in constant confusion and dissatisfaction because their purpose was unclear and their members had differing expectations. It can feel like herding cats if you're trying to facilitate group process when there isn't consensus on why you've gathered together in the first place. Remember the opening premise? People want to support group process, but they might not know how. One reason it may look like people are working against the group is because they're working toward a different purpose. So my first tip for today is that you help your group clarify its purpose so that you may more effectively fulfill your first role as a facilitator who is primarily responsible for guiding group process so that the group's purpose may be fulfilled. 
I really can't express the importance of this enough. I think it is impossible to achieve effective group process if everyone in the group doesn't know or understand the group's purpose. Next, I suggest that effective facilitators develop skills for simultaneously valuing the needs of each individual in the group, their own needs as facilitator, and the needs inherent in the group's purpose. Doing this makes us effective facilitators because it helps our group members meet their needs for mattering, consideration, belonging, and trust. And when these needs are met, most people will relax and allow themselves to be guided by a facilitator. My second tip, if you notice that there are several people in your group who interrupt the group process, challenge your direction, or are demanding, consider whether their needs for mattering, consideration, trust, and belonging are met. If you suspect these needs are not met in your group, spend focused time for the next several sessions, if you can, focusing on building trust in your group. This simple shift in focus can make an enormous difference in how your group functions together. You know, I've seen many groups that focus on individual needs only, like when the group is frequently hijacked with empathy requests, leaving little time to fulfill the group's purpose. And I've seen groups where the facilitator focuses on meeting their own needs primarily, as when a facilitator uses force or domination to get the group to proceed as he wants them to and groups where the facilitator ignores their own needs, thinking they're somehow supporting the group, such as when a facilitator doesn't directly express their own opinion about how to proceed and instead tries to manipulate the process into going their way, or when a facilitator frequently becomes annoyed with the group when things don't go as she hoped, or maybe she feels drained at the end of every group session. Remember that one of the basic premises of the nonviolent communication process is to value all needs equally. That means living in the possibility that everyone's needs may be valued. If I meet someone else's needs at my expense, I'm not living the value. If I meet my own needs at someone else's expense, I'm not living the value then either. If I try to meet people's needs but completely forget the group's purpose, I'm not living the value. If any of these needs aren't valued, I'm degrading the possibility that all needs could be valued and my effectiveness as a facilitator is diminished. The best way to live in the possibility of valuing all the needs is for the facilitator to consider each individual's needs, their own needs as a facilitator, and the inherent needs of the group purpose. I'm not suggesting perfection, of course. I'm suggesting that if you make that your driving force behind all your facilitation, you and your group members will have a better chance to flourish. So let's review. We started with an opening premise. People want to be supportive of group process, but they don't always know how. So they sometimes choose behaviors that inhibit or block group process from operating effectively. And then we clarified the facilitator's role. The facilitator is the person who is primarily responsible for guiding group process so that the group's purpose may be fulfilled. Everyone in the group shares some responsibility for this, but the facilitator takes on primary responsibility. And they do this by simultaneously valuing the needs of each individual in the group, their own needs as facilitator, and the needs inherent in the group's purpose. I have seen far too many NVC groups fail because facilitators lack effective skills. Through this monthly video series, I will share specific techniques and tips for developing your facilitator skills, to clarify where to focus your attention, and to sharpen your ability to listen deeply and ultimately to facilitate NVC groups with joy and confidence. I hope you'll join me next month.